Berwick, Pennsylvania, a hardworking small town where the game of football is a way of life. Where year in and year out, the cold and relentless Friday nights of autumn compound the collective history and tradition of these proud people. They are the Berwick Bulldogs, and with their history-making seasons of 1994 and 1995, they indeed went back-to-back -back a Pennsylvania first. As the Berwick Bulldogs began preparation for the 1994 season, the focus of the team was centered on a common target to avenge their loss of a year ago to Allentown Central Catholic. For defending state champion Berwick, their 13-8 shortcoming in that game of 1993 abruptly ended their dreams of back-to-back -back state titles. And as fate would have it, it was Allentown Central Catholic who would lay claim to the 1993 state championship crown. So with the memory of that loss still vivid in the minds of the returning Bulldogs, head coach George Curry would set the stage for the 1994 season. So we're going to take them one at a time, but we want to be in Altoona in December. And it begins today. Okay, the road begins August 16th, 1994. First practice. So we went after it. And we said, here's where our goals are. In 1994, we want to win every football game. We want to get back to Altoona and win a state title as we did in 88 and 92. George Curry is a man very familiar with championships. As the winningest active coach in the state of Pennsylvania, his 284 victories are unmatched. And as Curry had led the Bulldogs to 14 previous league championships and two USA Today national titles, the quest in 1994 included not only revenge on Allentown Central Catholic, but a run at a then third state championship in only the past seven years. So the challenge of a perfect season was set in place. The Bulldogs of 1994, like every Berwick team before them, accepted the invitation head on. But the Dogs would not endure the long road alone because as always, they would have the unconditional support of the people of Berwick with them each step of the way. For it is, in fact, the Berwick fans that have made this program so special. Berwick isn't a big town, but uh, everyone gets behind this football program. The football team puts this town on the map. Uh, it brings the town's people together. The support that we get from them is it's really a big factor. They'll follow you anywhere, anywhere we go. I mean, it's really great. Berwick has a tradition of being a football town from as long as I can remember. I guess championships belong where, uh, where people work for them, and uh, they certainly work for them here. And the Bulldogs of 1994 went to work immediately. In week one, Berwick would host H.D. Woodson, and the dogs were anything but friendly to their guests. Jason Weaver snatched two interceptions, returning 126 yards for a touchdown while Ross Stoiko carried 16 times for 96 yards and two visits to the end zone. The final from week one, Berwick 42, Woodson 7. In week two against Glenn Mills, it was junior quarterback Dave Robbins with a balanced passing attack that left the defense searching for answers. Brian Remley collected five receptions for 64 yards. B.J. Hayes 36 yards on three catches, while Dave Keck amassed 88 yards on only three connections. Robbins would finish 11 for 17 with 188 yards on the night, while Mike Kaufman, number 20, would record 10 tackles and two sacks. The final from week two, Berwick 41, Glenn Mills 14. Week three brought a somewhat closer contest for the faithful at Crispin Field as the Dogs hosted Pottsville. Combining for 129 yards on seven carries and two receptions, including touchdown runs of 37 and 28 yards, Brian Smith was the catalyst for the Berwick attack. But on defense, it was again Mike Kaufman, who combined with Jason Knauss to record 30 tackles as the defense firmly held their ground. The final from week number three, Berwick 35, Pottsville 20. In week four, the Bulldogs would, for the first time of the 1994 season, be without the friendly confines of Crispin Field as they traveled to Tunkhannock. But Ross Stoiko, however, felt right at home rushing 20 times for 113 yards and two touchdowns. On defense, Nick Dignan silenced the Tulkanic attack with eight tackles, including two for lost yards. The final from week four, Berwick 41, Tulkanic six. Berwick, now off to a 4-0 start, appeared to be invincible. 
outscoring opponents by a combined 159 to 47 over that four game period. But in week five, the dogs would host quad A power Williamsport and prove anything but. Turning the ball over six times, Berwick's hopes of a 15-0 season suddenly slipped through their fingers. Even Ross Stoiko's two TDs and 110 yards rushing, and the six receptions for 60 yards of B.J. Hayes could not spark the Bulldogs to victory. The final from week five, Williamsport 42, Berwick 29. That was a shock to everybody, I think. You know, we just came out, tried our hardest, and everything just didn't seem to go our way at all. And we tried not to keep our heads down, and just the next game we come out with our heads high. A big part of the loss was my, my fault because I threw four interceptions in that game, and uh, I took that hard. And it was a hard next week come over coming at, and uh, with the help of my teammates and coach, I just kind of put it aside. I mean, worked hard that week and uh, had a good game against uh, Coughlin that week. If there's such a thing as a wake-up call in football, that game gave us a wake-up call that we are still operating on. Apparently, no one was sleeping on October 7th, 1994, as the Bulldogs traveled to Wilkes-Barre Coughlin for what is believed to be the only sellout in modern football history. Having themselves beaten Williamsport two weeks earlier, Coughlin entered the game confident and unbeaten at 5-0. In a true test of Bulldog character, Berwick would rely on the focal point of the offense, quarterback Dave Robbins. For Robbins, who had faced the task of replacing Ron Paulus, a young man considered by some to be the greatest high schooler ever at that position, Coughlin would be a coming out party for any doubters who remain. Behind a dominant offensive line that allowed time and space for 335 yards of total offense, Robbins completed 14 of 15, passing attempts for 129 yards and two touchdowns. On the ground, Robbins carried for an additional 65 yards and a trip to the end zone. Defensively, it was the sophomore Manny Henry who hosted his coming out party of sorts, collecting 10 tackles, including two for loss. Firing on all cylinders, Berwick rebounds in convincing fashion. The final from week six, Berwick 43, Coughlin 14. Well, it was a big win to get us back on schedule. Um, for us to come back together and regroup for that team, it was really great. I think it was the biggest game of the season to that point, that win, and I think it brought our team around and uh, we stayed real focused the rest of the season. Focus might have been the theme of the day for the Bulldog defense in week seven as they zeroed in on the pitched in ground attack. The line of Josh George, Jason Callbaugh, Chris Kishbaugh, Denzel Hacker, Vinny Kishbaugh, Brandon Hunts, and Brian Callbaugh, coupled with the secondary of Mike Bennett, B.J. Hayes, David Keck, and Jason Weaver, rounded out a stingy defensive unit, which allowed only a total of 51 yards of total offense. On the counterattack, it was Brian Smith, averaging better than 11 yards per carry, blazing the trail to victory as the Dogs notched their first shutout of the season. The final from week seven, Berwick 49, Pittston zero. The Bulldogs, having outscored opponents 92 to 14 since the Williamsport loss, had Wyoming Valley West in week number eight, wishing they had left ammunition back in Berwick. But unfortunately for the Spartans, Coach Curry and company brought the entire arsenal. Amassing 473 yards of total offense, the line allowed Robbins to complete 15 of 23 for 245 yards and two touchdowns. Robbins would also carry for 51 yards and another two scores. But Mike Bennett's 71-yard touchdown reception set the tone for the evening as the defense behind Jeremy Kishbaugh's 11 tackles held the Spartans to only seven points. The final from week number eight, Berwick 53, Valley West 7. It was business as usual for the Bulldogs in week number nine at Hazleton as the offensive line allowed for 260 yards of rushing. Once again, Stoiko was the benefactor, carrying 20 times for 112 yards and three touchdowns, while Jeremy Kishbaugh rushed for 71 yards while averaging better than 10 yards per carry with two trips to the end zone. Defensively, the nine tackles of Jason Knaus and eight of Brian Stanley, who also came up with an interception set the tempo for a defensive unit that had allowed only 13 points in its last three games. The final from week nine, Berwick 49, Hazleton six. Week 10 brought the beginning of November and Lee Heighton back to Crispin Field. And this post Halloween game was a treat for Bulldog fans. Dave Robbins went to the air for 111 yards, including the 39 yard connection to Mike Bennett for a touchdown. 
Ross Steichel paid a visit to the end zone on three occasions for the second consecutive week. On defense, Jason Knauss and Mike Kaufman with 11 tackles each led the unit that held opponents to a touchdown or less for four consecutive weeks. The final from week 10, Berwick 35, Lee Highton 7. Week 11 brought Berwick's first District 2 playoff game and Honesdale to Crispin Field. And Brian Smith was spectacular. Accumulating 112 yards on 12 carries, Smith scored four times, including on runs of 38 and 31 yards, while Robbins found Mike Bennett for two touchdown receptions of 40 and 23 yards. B.J. Hayes with 10 tackles and an interception was a major reason why the Dogs notched their second shutout of the season and moved on to the District 2 championship game. The final from Week 11, Berwick 49, Honesdale 0. As always, Bulldog offense was the concern of North Pocono in Week 12, as they would attempt to do what no team had done since Williamsport in Week 5, hold the Bulldogs to under 35 points. And since that sole blemish in Week 5, the Bulldogs had scored 278 points, with their closest margin of victory coming by 28. At Berwick, offense comes fast and often furious. In Week 12, Dave Robbins dissected the North Pocono secondary, completing 9 of 10 attempts for 182 yards and two touchdowns, including Mike Bennett's 73-yard reception. For the defense, it was another outstanding effort behind Jason Canals with 14 tackles and Nick Dignan and Jeremy Kishbaugh, 10 apiece. The Berwick Bulldogs, the 1994 District 2 AAA champions. The final from Week 12, Berwick 36, North Pocono 7. In Week 13, a trip to Lehigh University and a date with defending state champion Allentown Central Catholic would stand as the greatest challenge between the Bulldogs and their goal of a state title. And there was understandably reason for concern. Here we are, we're playing Allentown Central Catholic with a 26 game win streak, returning state champions. Most of their kids are back from that state championship team. We have to go down there and we're playing them down there. Okay, there aren't many people who thought we'd be playing after that after this ball game. We knew they were going to be a tough team and they were very physical and they were a real good team, had a lot of good players and uh, we knew we just had to come out put it to them. And let's go down there and let's show them and, it, and make it sweeter. Let's go beat them in our backyard. You know, let's go get them. I mean, we don't work 12 months a year to go down there and say, we want to look good, we want to win. Okay, they beat us last year, they ended our 28 game win streak, let's go down and we'll end their 26 game win streak. Undaunted by superstition, week 13 on Allentown Central Catholic meant more than revenge for the Bulldogs. It would serve as an opportunity to showcase their sophisticated pro-style offense. With varied formations, Robbins was able to pass for 171 yards and two touchdowns, including six completions to Brian Remley for 71 yards and one score. Through a balanced attack, the ground game was led by Stoiko, rushing for 60 yards and one touchdown while Brian Smith's 25-yard touchdown scamper maintained the Bulldogs' momentum. The bigger Allentown Central Catholic defense was in a single word, outfoxed. While Berwick defensive stars B.J. Hayes, David Keck, Mike Kaufman, and Jason Knauss played with the heart of a champion. The final from week 13, Berwick 29, Allentown Central Catholic 18. For Berwick, the victory was sweet, but the celebration would be short-lived. For in week 14, Mannheim Central would present an even greater challenge as Berwick was far from out of the woods just yet. I think there was, uh, you know, there's some kind of relief there. Allentown was the team that everybody believed w was one of the best teams in the state Cer and probably believed that was the best team we were going to face. So you think you've cleared the big hurdle, but you know that, uh, you know, Mannheim wasn't going to be a, a, an easy touch. We had to go down to Mannheim's district and play there, those people in front of about 18, 19,000 people. They had a 26 game win streak. And, and again, they haven't beaten Berwick. So they had psychologically every advantage. They're home, they're 0 2 against Berwick previously. And it got us after a big win. But our kids, again, you know, again, the job was to keep them focused. But I think most football fans knew that we were in for another great football game. Week 14, Berwick and Mannheim Central at Hershey Stadium, the Eastern PA Final. It would come to be known as the game of the century. Nationally ranked, Mannheim Central was averaging better than 50 points per game, while allowing their opposition less than two. 
Berwick would need to rely on quarterback Dave Robbins, who connected on 13 of 18, passing for 158 yards. Twice, Robbins found Brian Remley for touchdowns. But Mannheim Central would match Berwick each step of the way. With under a minute remaining in the game and Berwick leading 37-30, Mannheim marched the ball into Bulldog territory. Then with under 30 seconds left and Berwick in danger of giving up the go-ahead score, Jason Canals made the game-saving interception at the Bulldog four-yard line. The Bulldogs had made the game-saving stand. In one of the most thrilling high school contests of all time, the Berwick Bulldogs had pulled off the seemingly impossible over a two-week period. And with Jason Canals providing a memory for a lifetime, the Berwick Bulldogs were once again headed to Altoona and the state championship. The final from week 14, Berwick 37, Mannheim Central 30. The Allentown Central Catholic game and the Mannheim Central ball game were probably over a two week period in Berg football history, I don't believe they ever were confronted with a challenge like this. Allentown Central Catholic was a big, big game, big confidence builder and stuff. But the Mannheim game for us to come back and have Jason Canales intercept the ball was something that we'll never forget. I've coached over 300 football games. And, and I've been head coach 29 years. And they were the greatest football games I've ever, I mean, they, they rival It's a Wonderful Life, White Christmas, and those two ball games, you can throw them in there. They're all classics. Week 15 brought the return of the Berwick Bulldogs to Altoona for the AAA state championship game to face Western Power Sharon. In accordance with the goals of the 1994 season, this game was to serve as the climax. But given the emotional circumstances that surrounded the Bulldogs previous two weeks, there was again basis for concern in the minds of many. That was the only time myself as a fan where I was a little bit worried about a letdown. Uh, and anybody would have to be when you stop two 26-game winning streaks and you're playing a team now that's lost two games. We're thinking that, you know, with everything that we've overcome with the Williamsport game, that loss, that we're here, this is what we wanted to get done and nothing's going to stop us because we came this far. We're not driving out to Altoona just to go for a ride. Okay, we came this far, let's get our third state championship. If the two previous games had played out like classic films, Berwick could not have scripted the Sharon game better themselves. Played out against the backdrop of wind and rain, it was once again the Bulldog offensive line that dominated the line of scrimmage, allowing the Dogs to run for 188 yards. Dave Robbins charged for 62 of those yards and two touchdowns. In the air, he completed 12 of 15, passing for another 188 yards, including a farewell touchdown to senior Mike Bennett. Defensively, it was once again Jason Knaus and Mike Kaufman capping their careers with spectacular performances. For the season, Robbins would surpass the 2,000-yard passing mark, and Mike Bennett would garner his seventh interception as the Berwick Bulldogs claim their third state championship title since its inception in 1988. The final from Week 15, the 1994 AAA state championship. Berwick 27, Sharon 7. It's just a great feeling. I mean, you can't describe these feelings, I mean, but I think everybody knew it, and uh, it was just an unbelievable feeling. You could see it game by game, just building. And every game right through the end, through the championship, the team just played better every week. In 1994, the Bulldogs played the toughest schedule in school history, conquering 11 playoff teams and two nationally ranked teams with a combined win streak of 52 games. After the sole loss of the season to Williamsport in week five, the Bulldogs were relentless, outscoring opponents 407 to 96. Robbins completed his junior season with 2,001 yards passing and 21 touchdowns. Brian Remley led the receiving core with 690 yards on 38 receptions for seven touchdowns. In rushing, Ross Stoiko compiled 1,175 yards and 25 touchdowns for his junior season. Defensively, the Bulldogs combined to intercept 21 passes while recovering another 16 fumbles. Mike Kaufman led the defensive standings with 102 tackles, 25 for lost yards. Jason Canales accounted for 88 tackles, 11 for lost yards, and one interception, possibly the biggest single play of the season. But for all of the accomplishments and obstacles that the Berwick Bulldogs had overcome in 1994, there remained unfinished business. League championship, district championship, Eastern PA title and state title. We did meet our championship goals. However, 
We were 14-1. The 1994 state championship was step one in Berwick's quest to win back-to-back -back state titles, a feat never accomplished in the seven-year history of the PIAA playoffs. But the 1995 season would not be as simple as a walk in the park. The Bulldog loss through graduation would be considerable, and expectation, as always, would be high. Well, coming into 95, as in 94, I think we lost a lot more players. On uh, this 95 team, we uh, lost almost our whole offensive line and our receivers, but Brian, so we had a lot of rebuilding to do on offense. I mean, you like to think about winning back-to-back -back state championships, but that's just a horrendous task. The, I mean, anybody winning back-to-back -back championships at, at any level of sports is uh, pretty high odds. We don't rebuild, we reload. And that's our philosophy here. And I, have, I like to think that no matter what we lost, we can replace. And that's because we work very, very hard in the off season. Uh, expectations, again, were very, very high because um, we just thought that uh, it could be a repeat of 1994. The off season at Berwick is when champions are made. It is because of the incredible work ethic of Bulldog players and coaching personnel that Berwick has become among the premier high school football programs in the nation. The uh, work ethic is, it, it becomes contagious. And, and I think these kids have a great work ethic. I have a great work ethic. Anybody around me is gonna have a great work ethic because that's the way we do it here. It's the result of, of just a lot of discipline and hard work. If you're not that close to it, uh, I think there's a tendency to think that there's some smoke and mirrors or some, some kind of magic there. But when you watch what goes on, it's not, uh, there isn't anything mystical about it. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, do everything, you know, for the total development of the kid, self-esteem, uh, strength, conditioning of the heart and cardiovascular system, and, and it's, it's a program that is developed around those principles. I love the, the work ethic around here. I love uh, the championship uh, feeling all the time. It's, it's great. You're talking two, three hours a day some of the kids were here and you know January to August and then during the season they were here and it was just a commitment to win and a commitment to win a, a state title. I really believe we have the best high school football coach in the nation but I also believe that we have the best assistant high school coaches in the nation. I got great coaches, and, and you know, right now I got guys like Andy Mahaley, who was a great player here. He's, he's working with me, and my son Kaz, and, and I got Bobby Coop helped me, uh, Keith Seeley. These guys are all great players. John Pruitt was one of the greatest high school players I've ever, ever been around. I mean, these guys are all part of the staff now. If everybody would work as hard as Coach Curry works, they would have a success the same way he has it. Not only him, his complete coaching staff. They're dedicated, and they do it 12 months out of the year. Uh, that's why he's a winner, and that's why Berwick's a winner, because of Coach Curry. For the 1995 season, the Berwick Bulldogs would maintain the same standard of excellence that they had set previous to their championship season of 1994. Except for a 95, the season would need to be perfect. For 95 goals, we want a better last year's record. We want to go 15 and 0. No one ever won back-to-back -back state championships. Okay, we want to be the first team to go back-to-back. -back. No one ever won four state titles. We want to do that. Okay, but we just said the main thing we focused on was two things, 15-0 and back-to-back. And -back. Was to win back-to-back -back state titles and be undefeated, which is what we couldn't do the, the year before that. We're confident, we're strong, we're, we're knowledgeable. Our kids know how to play football. We got a great system that no one has stopped. Why can't we win it in 95? There's no question. We can win it again. 1995 would begin as the 1994 season did with a date with Woodson in week one. And the result was very similar. Dave Robbins connected with Justin D. John Domenico for a 36 yard touchdown while completing 13 of 22 for 156 yards on the game. Ross Stoiko on the ground ran for 85 yards, visiting the end zone twice while the Bulldog defense, including an entirely new secondary of Tommy Lockhart, Jerry Saperco, Justin Margani, Tim Mason and Percy Hayes would hold Woodson to a total of 44 yards of passing as the Bulldogs appear seemingly in midseason form. The final from week one, Berwick 42, Woodson 6. In week two, Berwick hosted Glenn Mills in one of the most evenly played contests at Crispin Field in recent memory. 
Brian Smith's fourth quarter touchdown run made it 21-7 dogs. But Glenn Mills standout Marco Jackson would pull them to within seven. But then with just over two minutes to play in the game, Jackson fumbles the ball and Tom Lockhart and Justin Margani are there to recover as the Bulldogs hang on to victory. The final from week two, Berwick 21, Glenn Mills 14. In week three, offensive linemen Sam DeFinis, Brian Confer, Manny Henry, Mark Lawbaugh, and Barney Bowman made their presence felt as Berwick traveled to Pottsville. Replacing the dominant front of 94, the line allowed Berwick 293 yards on the ground as the Dogs rushed for six touchdowns. Brian Smith's 21-yard score opened a 21-point Berwick fourth quarter. The final from week three, Berwick 48, Pottsville 10. In week four, hosting Tunkhannock, Berwick proved that when it rains, it pours, as the Bulldogs drenched Tunkhannock with offense. Amassing 225 yards and 34 points in the first half, Robbins passed for 191 yards, including a 48-yard touchdown to Brian Remley. Defensively, Berwick allowed but three yards rushing on 23 attempts. The final from week four, Berwick 47, Tunkhannock 6. Week 5 brought the matchup that fans had waited an entire year for as the Bulldogs traveled to Williamsport. With more than 10,000 on hand, the Berwick-Williamsport matchup had the attention of the entire state. At the center of the media spectacle, Berwick, now the number two team in the nation, would need to complete the task they could not one year before. Championship atmosphere. I mean, you, electricity in that stadium, when you walk out on that field, you can cut it. It is another game on our schedule but it is a team that beat us the year before. So you do go into that football game thinking this team beat you last year, but not a revenge factor. It's not the way we play football. It was something we had to take care of. We just had to take care of that, you know, for our own satisfaction, plus meet our 95 goals, which is 15 and 0, back to back. Where turnovers had cost Berwick the game in 94, on this day they would afford but one interception on a tip pass. And from the opening possession, in which the Bulldogs drove 87 yards in six plays, culminating in a 55-yard touchdown reception by Justin D. John Domenico, it was Berwick who would set the tempo. Robbins would pass for 188 yards and two touchdowns, but it was the 133 yards mounted by Brian Smith on the ground attack that led to Berwick's 20 second-half points. For the defense, a scoreless second half while allowing a total of 64 rushing yards, served as a good indication of things to come as the Bulldogs charged past a major hurdle. The final from week five, Berwick third, Williamsport seven. It was a bigger thing for the fans, but for the team itself to, to beat them was a really great feeling because there was a lot being said back and forth. And I mean, the game's played on the field and that's where, that's where we ended it. On the field is the last place you wanted to be if you were playing for Wilkes-Barre Coughlin because in week six, Berwick would explode behind Dave Robbins, who finishes the night 11 for 12 with 174 yards. Robbins runs for two TDs, as does Ross Stoiko, who gains 80 yards on the night. And on the night, Berwick honors former coach Joe Coviello, who in 1941 led the Bulldogs to an 11-0 record with nine shutouts. The defense pays tribute by allowing but five first downs and posting their first shutout of the 95 season. The final from week six, Berwick 45, Wilkes-Barre Coughlin zero. In week seven, Berwick traveled to Pittston where Brian Smith proved why they call him Mr. Excitement. After the Bulldogs failed to score a touchdown on their first possession for the very first time in the 95 season, Smith sparks the offense with a 17 yard touchdown run. One of three rushing scores on the night, Smith would also run to daylight from 37 yards out as he collected 106 yards on the ground. Robbins, the cornerstone of the Bulldog attack, would complete 11 of 16 for 152 yards and two touchdowns. The final from week seven, Berwick 42, Pittston six. Having allowed but 19 points over the previous month, the Bulldog defensive unit entered week eight poised for a challenge. And against Wyoming Valley West, they got one. Allowing 15 points through three quarters, the most allowed in any game this season, the Bulldog defense dug in deep and stood their ground in the game's closing period. Ross Stoiko's fourth quarter touchdown, one of his three on the night, put the game out of reach as Berwick explodes, outscoring the Spartans by 28 in the fourth quarter. 
but it was an unlikely rushing leader that night as Dave Robbins labors for 112 of the Bulldogs' 296 yards of ground attack. The defense would force Valley West to punt often in the second half, and the Berwick offense, as usual, would capitalize. The final from Week 8, Berwick 43, Wyoming Valley West 15. In Week 9 on Halloween 1995, the Bulldog defense would play tricks on Hazleton as the Dogs forced Hazleton quarterback Dave Ladoff to fumble inside his own five. Dave Robbins would take the ball into the end zone just three plays later. Robbins, continuing to surpass the expectations of many, completes 10 of 16 for 184 yards and two touchdowns. Ross Stoiko, on the receiving end of the 19-yard touchdown pass from Robbins, would rush for two more. Berwick scores 26 unanswered points in the closing quarters, proving again that the second half is their time to dominate. The final from week nine, Berwick 33, Hazleton zero. But for Berwick, all is not well with the victory as senior Jeremy Kishbaugh goes down against Hazleton with a critical knee injury. The all-conference standout would not play another down as a Bulldog. Week 10 brought the close of the regular season and the Bulldogs to Lee Highton. Dave Robbins would complete 12 of 18 for 146 yards passing, including 34 and 29 yard touchdown connections to Brian Remley. Ross Dyko's 65 yard rushing included the six yard TD run in the fourth quarter that put the cap on Curry's ninth undefeated Bulldog season. The final from week 10, Berwick 26, Lee Highton seven. Week 11 presented the opening of the playoffs and a meeting with Honesdale in the District 2 semifinal. And the Bulldogs would waste no time putting numbers on the scoreboard. Off of a 66-yard opening drive, Ross Stoiko finishes the final four himself. And the Bulldog D forces a first quarter turnover. Berwick leads 13-0 before Honesdale even knew what hit them. Behind a ground attack that mounted 265 yards was Brian Smith who carried 12 times for 123 of those yards and two touchdowns. Robbins hooks up with Brian Remley on the 27-yard touchdown connection, and it's lights out for Honesdale, as the Bulldog defense claimed their third shutout victim of the season. The final from week 11, Berwick 41, Honesdale 0. Week 12, the District 2 championship game as the Bulldogs face off against Valley View. In the first quarter, Justin D. John Domenico races 14 yards on his only carry of the day for the opening score. But Ross Stoiko once again was the workhorse for the Bulldog offense. Carrying the ball 14 times for 123 yards, Stoiko would set up Robbins, who scored on three occasions from inside the five. The Bulldogs would recover two Valley View fumbles as the defense behind Nick Dignan, Barney Bowman, Jeremiah Dyer, and Paul Kyle prove once again why this is the number one team in the nation. The final from week 12, Berwick 49, Valley View 13. Week 13 brought confusion for North Schuylkill in the PIAA Eastern semifinal in a case of mistaken identity. Having buried his trademark number 44 jersey at the bottom of his travel bag, Brian Smith is forced to wear number 25. But for most of the day, Spartan defenders saw only the back of Brian Smith's jersey anyway rushing for 116 yards and scoring on spectacular runs of 28 and 78 yards, Smith would later close the day by returning this interception 20 yards for a touchdown. Once again, the offensive line allows for 284 yards of total offense and converts for 24 unanswered second half points. While the defense, holding the Spartans to but 25 yards of offense, would claim yet another second half shutout. The final from week 13, Berwick 31, North Schuylkill 3. Week 14 will forever stand out as the single greatest challenge in Berwick's quest for back-to-back -back state championships. As the 1994 classic between the Bulldogs and Mannheim Central would come to be known as the game of the century, the 95 battle, once again for a state championship game berth, might simply best be described as the game of the millennium. Berwick fans got more than they paid for the price of admission on this day, because on December 2nd, 1995, they saw the Bulldogs perform a miracle before their very eyes. As Berwick turns the ball over early in the first quarter, Mannheim recovers, setting up a one-yard Chris Barnett touchdown. For Mannheim, this quick strike against the top team in the nation is exactly what they were looking for. We turn the ball over right off the bat. They score. Now, 
They're six feet off the ground. They're sky high. Their fans are sky high. Their team is sky high. They're into it. See, now it's like playing 20 guys, not 11. The Mannheim defense appeared 20 strong as the Bulldogs turned the ball over yet again, resulting in another Mannheim score. But when Mannheim quarterback Matt Nagy found Eric Ziegler on a 22-yard touchdown pass, the Bulldogs were suddenly trailing 17-0 and were faced with the stark reality that their season and the goals and dreams that accompany it might very well end today. There's a lot of disappointment. I mean, we saw our goal could have been fading away. I mean, this is what we've wanted to do all year long, and uh, it started to fade away. And The first half could not have ended soon enough for Berwick, but trailing 17-0 at intermission, Berwick had a glimmering ray of hope and a devastating second-half game plan. Most of the Berwick fans knew one thing. Berwick, this whole last year, 1995, was a second-half football team. I walked in at halftime, and I'll tell you what, I said, I've seen some challenges before in my coaching career. This is, this is a doozy, but we can do it. We can do it. Certainly got the fans uh, edgy, but they did support the team. And I'll have to I'll throw out a quote that, that we start using at halftime, looking that the job for the second half was difficult but not impossible. And people uh, started to believe that. It was going to take quite an effort. And I told the kids right up, there's anybody in this room that believes they cannot win, take your uniform off. Don't even go out there. Now, who believes they can win? Stand up. They bounced up. Everybody rallied together and brought each other up and said, we can do this. It's 0-0. Let's go out there and let's, let's win the game. Our defense knew they had a big job to do, and they did it. There was no margin for error any, in the second half at all, and the team did everything they had to do. The game plan was simple. Stop Mannheim's offense dead in its tracks, get possession, and convert. The Bulldog defense played like a Tom Cruise movie, making all the right moves. Through a balanced offensive attack in the second half that kept Mannheim guessing, Dave Robbins would complete a perfect 7 of 7 for 101 yards. But on the ground, Brian Smith, Ross Stoiko, and Robbins would fight for every last yard. As Stoiko scores from one yard out, he breathes new life into Berwick. And as the defense would play the game of a lifetime, Dave Robbins would be put in a position to score on the quarterback sneak and completes the task. Trailing 17-12, the Bulldog defense makes one last stand that would have made Custer proud. In the closing minutes of the fourth quarter, Dave Robbins would once again find the end zone, the most crucial touchdown of his career, making the score 18-17 Berwick. But the Bulldogs had left time on the clock. As Mannheim begins to move the ball upfield, the memory of last season's final drive instantly comes to mind. Here we go again. After Mannheim picks up another first down, the Berwick sideline grows increasingly quiet. Mannheim is now in position to end Berwick's storybook finish. And then, with under 40 seconds remaining in the game, Matt Nagy is intercepted by Brian Smith, grasping the football with the strength of 40 men. Brian Smith would secure the Berwick victory. And incredibly, it would once again come down to a single, history-making interception. We didn't intercept that, it was like a flashback from the year before, you know, when Jason Knauss intercepted the ball. I mean, at that point, it was like nothing could top that. It was almost like a repeat performance. Uh, it was just like a sign of relief when the ball was intercepted. As long as people are alive who are football fans, they'll be talking about those ball games. For the second consecutive season, the Berwick Bulldogs would edge Mannheim Central by the slimmest of margins. Now 14-0 and showing the courage, character, and desire of a champion, the Berwick Bulldogs would return to Altoona to make history. The final from week 14, Berwick 18, Mannheim Central 17. December 8, 1995, the final date on the calendar, week number 15. For the Berwick Bulldogs, it would all come down to one final meeting with Sharon. And for the seniors who had worked virtually year-round since the eighth grade, this game would represent their entire careers. For only with this game could they finally reach the incredible goals set before them. The town of Berwick, Pennsylvania was on the verge of achieving what none other had before. Back to back, 15-0. That's all we talked about all year. Here it is, man. We're here. And we're here the way we want to be here. We're here as a 14-0 football team. And we have a chance to do some things that have never been done. Okay, never been done. 
for the Berwick Bulldogs, the 1995 state championship would serve as a magnificent conclusion. As senior Ross Stoiko bids farewell with 117 yards on 18 carries and two touchdowns, the junior Brian Smith runs for 87 yards as the offensive line once again performs brilliantly. Brian Remley collects five receptions for 107 yards and two touchdowns. But most fittingly of all, as senior quarterback Dave Robbins completes eight of 11 passing for 140 yards, he ends his career at Berwick with a 57-yard touchdown pass to Remley. Dave Robbins' very first pass at Berwick, a touchdown, his very last, also a touchdown. And behind a defensive unit that never allowed Sharon into the ball game, the Berwick Bulldogs were the 1995 PIAA state champions. The final from week 15, Berwick 43, Sharon 3. You walk off there saying 15 and all, you just say, thank God. You, know, you thank the good Lord that you did it, it's over. You, know, you take a deep breath and, and you just go, wow, it's unbelievable. You just think back on it and just like, wow, you know, it's unreal. Back-to-back -back state championships and something that I'll always remember. I don't know what heaven's like, but I know one thing. <laughs> it has to be pretty close to it. The Berwick Bulldogs, the first team in PIAA history to win back-to-back -back state championships. USA Today's 1995 national champion and a team whose senior class leaves with a 42-2 record over three seasons. And as the Bulldogs would raise the championship trophies on those cold December nights, the love and support of the city of Berwick and of the Bulldog faithful radiate a warmth they will take with them for a lifetime. They were the first team to win 15 games and the first team to win back-to-back -back state titles. That, that can be never taken away from them. Uh, I guess the greatest one was uh, at the end of the state championship game when my son came up and uh, gave me a hug. When you walk out on the field and you see those people packed, you know, they pack these bleachers and they give you the, their cheering and they get into it, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, if you're going to coach football, this is the town to coach it. Because the people get behind it. The business community, uh, the fans, it's unbelievable. I miss the fan support here. All the fans are great. Uh, all the coaches and the staff. And uh, just the people people here. I mean, you walk around and people just seem to know who you are for some reason. But I miss a lot of things here. I hate to see uh, the championship game over with. Uh, it's tough for me to go in the locker room. You know, but there's going to be more next year. You know, whether you're the star or the or the second, third, fourth stringer, you know, you're a part of a, of a of a family, and that's how we like to think of ourselves with this program. And and everyone's important to the to the sec success of each other. There's so much violence, different things going on in other communities, and it shows when a town pulls together along with their young people, what could be done. I never had any children, and. Uh, there's not one kid on this team that I wouldn't take from my own. You know, my dad used to say, and, I, and this is another thing I tell our kids, he said, if you work hard, good things will happen to you. Okay? If you work hard, good things will happen to you. And that's, that's my philosophy. I love football. If you first enter Berwick a stranger, you will no doubt leave as a friend. And as the boys will exit come springtime, they will exit men. So as the class of 1996 prepare to begin their lives, they will take with them the lessons and memories of a great city, where the game of football is life, and with the knowledge that they had made history by going back to back, a Pennsylvania first. The cat is what Berwick football is all about. There's a guy who was 81 years old, here every day, takes the equipment out, loads that bus game day. I mean, he gets the towel going, I mean, you know, just when you feel tired and you look over at the cat, you say, wait a minute, there's a guy 81 years old and he's, he's all fired up. It mean, when it means a lot to guys like that, you, know, you, ju you just say, this is what Berwick's all about. Ernest Saracino, the man we know as the Cat Man, is a very special part of the Berwick tradition. For decades, the Cat Man has served as the unofficial ambassador of Berwick football. He is the Cat Man and at worst, he represents what is best about Berwick football. This is part of my life. In fact, it is my life. That's how much I enjoy it.
For your decades of service to Berwick football, we honor you, Ernest Saraceno, the Catman, and we say thank you. After one half of football, San Francisco leads New York 540 to 310. In the future, it won't be.